coming up on this Behind the News special. What is a super blue blood moon? A class all about Mars and how we helped to heal the ozone layer. Hi and welcome to BTN's Space Science Special. I'm Amelia Mosley. Earlier this year, kids and adults all over Australia stayed up late to check out a very special moon. It's called a super blue blood moon and it was pretty spectacular. Here's how it happened. Guess what tonight is? I don't know, your birthday? No, it's... You really don't know what my birthday is? What is tonight? Tonight? is a full moon. Not this again. And you know what that means? Yeah, it means you're going to try to become a werewolf again. Exactly. I'll finally be able to howl at the moon and unleash the beast within. Oh! No, you won't. Excuse me? You try this literally every month and literally every month, nothing happens. What makes you think this time is going to be any different? Because, Matthew, tonight is no ordinary full moon. Tonight is a super blue blood moon. What? There's going to be a super moon, a blue moon and a blood moon all in the same night. I don't know what any of those things are. Well, lucky you've got me. <laughs> OK, first the supermoon part. That happens when the moon and the Earth get closer together than usual. You see, the moon revolves around the Earth in an egg-shaped orbit like this. And when it gets about 25,000 kilometres closer than normal, it looks much bigger and brighter, especially as it emerges over the horizon, which makes for some pretty amazing pics. Okay, but what's with the blood moon? Sounds kind of gross. Oh, speaking of gross... No, a blood moon doesn't actually have anything to do with blood. A blood moon is a total lunar eclipse. That means the sun, the earth and the moon all line up and the moon goes dark as it passes through the earth's shadow. It means not all the light from the sun can get through the Earth to the moon. And the result? The moon starts glowing red. Again, lots of awesome pics. Hold on, so... If a blood moon is red, I assume a blue moon is blue. But how can the moon be both red and blue at the same time? Is it purple? Good guess, but not quite. You know the phrase, once in a blue moon? It means not all that often. And that's because we don't get blue moons all that often. Generally, there's one full moon every month. But occasionally, two manage to squeeze in. The second one is called a blue moon. It's not actually blue, just the usual white-yellow colour. So you see, Matt, this is a really big deal. There hasn't been a super blue blood moon since before you and I were born, and there isn't going to be another one until 2037. I still think it's ridiculous that you think you can transform yourself into a werewolf. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to call my psychic and get my super blue blood moon horoscope. This is a serious cosmic trifecta, and I need to make sure my karmic energies are aligned. Seriously? Have you ever wanted to go to Mars? Well, one group of high school kids gets to go there every Thursday morning. Well, kinda. In a little less than 10 minutes, you'll be leaving Earth. Your destination is the planet Mars. These high school students are about to become the first humans to set foot on the red planet. The Mars Explorer has touched down on the planet Mars. Well, kinda. Good. They're transforming into astronauts, complete with spacesuits, helmets, communication systems, and an all important air supply. 
And Mission Commander Kimberly has been kind enough to take me along on this journey of discovery. So I'm turning into an astronaut right now. <laughs> yeah. Exciting, my dream's coming true. <laughs> it's all part of space school, yes, space school, where students at this high school get to run their own simulated mission to Mars. So what is your mission? Um, well, we all have different roles, but I think it all comes back to sort of finding if life was on Mars and seeing if, you know, we were able to eventually have humans there, so yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, we better get this going then. Yeah. Let's do it. Helmets on. Into the airlock we go and out onto the surface. It's a copy of a crater on the red planet, complete with soil, rocks and changes in atmosphere. So when you're in there, it can start off as being really cold and you feel really light, but then it can get really muggy and the lights change, so there'll be different lights on you all the time. These intrepid explorers all have different roles, including a physicist, chemist, geologist and the all-important biologist. The role of the biologist is just to find any organisms that may have still been able to live on Mars through the mag magnetic fields and everything. They have to carry out different tasks like collecting samples, measuring radiation and testing acidity levels. We've got another green one in zone five. Okay, thanks. So site three now? Yep. Yep. Site three. They do it all with the help of mission control. My role is the mission director and I have to make sure no one dies um, uh, when the mission's going on. Yep, keeping their simulated astronauts alive is obviously key. They track their vital signs, analyse data and communicate directions. So you switch on the metal detector and the green light will light up. The mission control room is like the ears and the eyes, so they really um, need to give, have really good communication skills um, because obviously the astronauts need to be able to talk to someone that's not in the actual situation they're in so they can think things through clearly and make decisions. They also learn a lot by completing some tricky diagnostics. So the diagnostic questions um, are all different problems. They can be problem solving or they also can be involving maths or logical problems and they all apply to real life problems that you experience um, on a mission to Mars. Sometimes things go wrong on purpose. There is a lightning storm about to happen. There's some like storms or sandstorms or something that will happen that we'll have to evacuate and get everything back to the station before everything explodes. <laughs> So, mission complete. But how'd they go with that whole finding alien life thing? So unfortunately this time we didn't be able, we couldn't find any life forms, but maybe next time we'll be able to when we run it again. Either way, they say being a space school student is a really unique and inspiring experience. I think this is a great opportunity for girls to um, like see what there is in the space industry. It's so inspiring to be able to actually one day think that maybe we will be able to go to NASA and apply. So I guess the final question is, do these girls want to go to the real Mars one day? If we actually get to Mars, it will be like the best thing on planet Earth um, because we've, we've been to um, the moon and everyone was so excited. So to get to another planet, it will be a very, very awesome. I think I would, but I certainly wouldn't go on the first mission. I would want to make sure they would return. <laughs> Next up today to the ozone layer. Earlier this year, NASA revealed that the hole in the ozone layer is the smallest it's been in three decades. That's a pretty big deal because in the 90s, things were looking really bad. Here's the story. Hello and welcome to science. I'm Dr. Science and today we're going to be learning about science stuff. Any questions? What's the ozone layer? Well, that's a good question. That's um I know what that is. That's the uh That's I I know what it, I know what it is. I'm a scientist. Uh, that's It uh, turns out Dr. Science needs some help. <sighs> Luckily, I know exactly who to go to. 
Hey, I'm Sean, uh, <clears throat> Dr. Science. Hi, Dr. Science. I'm Darren. I'm a meteorologist at the Bureau of Meteorology. So, what is the ozone layer scientifically? It's actually a layer of ozone gas high up in the atmosphere. So we're talking about 20 to 30 kilometers up. And that layer of ozone actually absorbs a lot of the ultraviolet energy or radiation coming from the sun. And that's a really good thing because the ultraviolet radiation actually causes things like sunburn and skin cancers. Ozone is a special molecule made up of three oxygen atoms. Up in the atmosphere, those molecules are pretty much acting as the planet's sunscreen, absorbing up to 99% of the sun's ultraviolet light. So if we lost our protection from it, we'd be in trouble. So what is the ozone hole? Well, you have to actually go back about 100 years when people created a gas to actually use in things like refrigerators and in spray cans. And they created this gas called CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons. And what they actually found out through the 1970s um, was that, that those CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons actually stay in the atmosphere a long time. They go up into the stratosphere and the chlorine breaks off and actually destroys thousands and thousands of ozone molecules. In 1985, a report was released that showed the ozone layer had gotten thinner at each of the poles and it was getting worse. The culprit, you guessed it, CFCs. Ozone depletion in the atmosphere is getting worse. And of your own. People were worried we soon wouldn't be protected from the sun's radiation. It was happening right above us and quicker than anyone could imagine. So, the world acted. Eventually, CFCs were banned around the globe and companies found other ways to make deodorant that didn't hurt the ozone layer or make anyone any smellier. Now, it looks like that effort is making a big difference. The hole in the ozone layer is the smallest it's been since 1988. In the last 10 years or so, it's starting to get smaller and smaller. And that means we're starting to see recovery in the levels of ozone in the, in the stratosphere. Um, and we're expecting that that ozone hole will disappear completely over the next 30 to 40 years. It is fantastic news that uh, everyone around the, group, the world got together and agreed to take action to stop this affecting us. Now to a story about one of the world's most famous scientists. Stephen Hawking died earlier this year at the age of 76. He was a pioneer in cosmology and theoretical physics. We found out how he made such a huge impact on scientific thinking around the world. He was often called the most brilliant theoretical physicist since Albert Einstein known for his groundbreaking theories that change the way we think about the universe and even time itself. But Stephen Hawking's amazing career actually started as a young man who struggled to get around to doing his homework. That was the word around Oxford University where he studied physics. That's the examination of all matter and the forces that interact with it. He then went on to Cambridge to research cosmology, the study of the origin of the universe. But when he was 21, Hawking's life hit a big hurdle. He was diagnosed with motor neuron disease, which causes the brain to stop sending messages to a person's muscles. At the time, doctors said he would only live for around two years, but he proved them very, very wrong. However difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. And with the help of a special wheelchair and speech computer, that's exactly what he did. Hawking spent much of his time researching the beginning of the universe and black holes. His most famous discovery was probably when he demonstrated that black holes emit some radiation. Before this, it was believed that nothing could escape their gravitational pull. The radiation from black holes has since become known as Hawking radiation. He also spent a lot of time thinking about what existed before the Big Bang, which sounds pretty complicated, right? But Hawking wrote books that explained his big ideas in ways that could be understood by the average person. 
In 1988, he published A Brief History of Time, which became really popular and sold more than 10 million copies. Throughout his life, Stephen Hawking inspired people to look beyond our planet and expand our knowledge of the universe. His family says that he'll be greatly missed, but the legacy of his amazing ideas will live on. And that's all for this BTN Space Science Special. For more info on all of our specials, just head to our website. See you next time.